This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that there are times when we come to your word and the words seem very difficult for us to hear and to understand. Let us not be of those who fade away and leave you, but let us join the company of Peter and all those who come to say, you are the Holy One of God, and follow you, even in the midst of your difficult words. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If I didn't know Jeremy better, I would say he chose when to have his surgery so he didn't have to preach on this text. Uh, But uh, as I'm sure you all know, he is uh, doing well and recuperating. So praise God for that. But there are times when we encounter difficult lessons, difficult lections. You can always tell how gutsy the preacher is, is whether they choose to preach on the tough ones or not. Some people just go for the easy ones. Yeah, that's for, that's for novices. We have difficult words of scripture for a reason. They challenge us. They instruct us. They discipline us. But as I've discovered those texts that I find difficult with which to deal, they basically fall into two camps. The first are those texts that you almost feel like you need to pull out a a Greek lexicon and maybe there's some hidden truths in here because I don't like what this says in English. Things that are really hard to understand. I've actually uh, listened to the last several sermons from Jeremy, so I know that you've had your fill of those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, so I'm not going to go there again. But that definitely is one of those tough ones with which to deal, especially when you stop and think that it's said in the context before the Last Supper. People must have thought Jesus was crazy. But there are others on my list like that that I think are really hard, very difficult to understand. I'm sure you have your own list. Here's my top five. Eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus or you have no life in me. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. I I don't want to deal with that text. You must be born again. I'm actually comfortable with that, but a lot of Episcopalians aren't. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, if I was God, I would have said those things differently. So there are certain things, certain texts like that that are just really hard to understand. But then there are other texts that we understand perfectly well, they're just difficult for us to hear because we don't want to do them. Again, I'm sure you have your list. Here's mine. Forgive 70 times 7. Really? 490 times? Anybody counting up close to 490? So you think, you know, pretty soon I'm going to get vengeance. (laughs) Love your enemies. Easy to understand, hard to do. Turn the other cheek before you get your pound of flesh. You must be perfect 
even as I am perfect. Who do you say that I am? And then, just because God is fun, there are some scriptures for me that actually fall in both camps. They're hard to understand and you don't want to do them. Or they make you really uncomfortable. I'm just going to give you one. Why do you call me Lord, Lord and not do what I tell you? Everybody got your hard sayings trickling around in your brains? Keep those in mind. About eight months ago, I was contacted by a men's Bible study that's online in the Atlanta area. Most of them were retired Lockheed executives, and uh, they had heard about me and wanted me to do a teaching. What do you want me to teach on? How about the book of Revelation? Oh, yeah, sure, let's, <laughs> let's pick an easy one. <laughs> and, and, of course, there's not an Episcopalian in the group, which makes it even more fun. Because we have Baptists and Pentecostals and every denomination you can imagine. And the thought that they are learning scripture from an Episcopalian, some of whom aren't really sure I'm a Christian, um, was really a shock. But we made it through Revelation and then now we're studying Genesis and you know, we'll get to certain texts and people, whoa, 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 stop, stop. I got 18 questions about that text. Okay, let's unpack it. Because you th see, so oftentimes what happens when we get to those tough texts in Scripture, we want to jump over. Oh, we'll come back to that. We'll put it on our study later list. Because having to deal with one of those tough sayings is going to take some time. It's going to take some work. It's going to take a lot of prayer. It's going to take a lot of study. And you might spend hours doing all that and you still don't understand it. Welcome to the club. But you see, those difficult passages of Scripture are there, I believe, for many reasons. If you're counting, here are my nine. Wanted to have ten so I could have a top ten list, but nine came to mind. One, they stretch us. Those tough sayings of Jesus stretch us. The parables, if, if, you're, if you're just lost and looking for some tough words, look in the parables. It's almost every sentence. In fact, I remember when I was learning about the parables the first time, the professor used the analogy a parable is like a grain of sand in an oyster. It's meant to aggravate you <laughs> so that you can make of that aggravation a pearl. Jump to the parable. They will stretch you way outside of your comfort zone. The other thing that difficult sayings of Jesus do is they challenge us. Is the matter that I don't understand this? Am I too dense? Or am I slow in the brain? Or do I just not want to do it? Do I just not want to follow this? I mean, you know, after all, if, if, if we're meant to go out and preach the good news, you know, this isn't part of the good news. This is part of the tough news. Let's get to the good stuff. None of these difficult sayings of Jesus are sayings that are there for a reason. They're, they're meant to really challenge us so that our faith doesn't come out flat and empty. It's, it's an experienced faith that, that we have struggled through and learned and listened and because if it's not a really tough faith, it's not going to move anyone. The tough sayings of Jesus are also there so we can learn more about, more about him. These are things he said. Or at least people wrote down and said he said. If God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, 
I know God well enough to know that when we see him in glory, you know those tough sayings that we really haven't wanted to deal with? I can just imagine God coming up to us and saying, now let's talk about that 70 times 7. <laughs> or let, let's talk about the, those things that were really hard for you to believe. Wouldn't it be just like him? I also believe that the hard sayings of Jesus are there to teach us something about ourselves. We're really honest. Those things that maybe are secrets of our heart, those things that we think we've pulled the wool over everybody's eyes, those things that we hope nobody knows or hope nobody finds out. God's word is there to speak to those things too. Not just the good stuff, but the bad stuff. Those hard words of scripture are also there to call us into a deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. I can tell you I've been ordained 46 years and I've preached more sermons than I want to preach. I always preach them to me first because I need to hear them too. But when you teach... You have to go to a depth of, of understanding and a depth of knowledge so that just about any question someone could ask you, you're ready to give them a ballpark answer. So I can tell you this, this Bible study that I teach on Friday mornings at 7.30, which is way too early for a retired person to have to get up for, <laughs> um, I actually love. I, I, spend hours and hours studying until I come across something that I've never learned before. Then I get to stop. And my dear wife, who's a cradled Baptist, I couldn't help it. There were no good-looking Episcopal girls. Um, I, 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 had to, I had to go outside. Um, and she's like, really? Really? You're still studying that passage? Uh, I learned about that a long time ago. Those tough scriptures are there to bring us into a much more intimate relationship with Jesus. Lord, in my finite mind, I can't figure this out, but I trust your Holy Spirit to lead and guide me <coughs> to all truth. And you'll discover what's going on. Those difficult scriptures also call us to deeper and deeper study. You know, I, I actually still have the Bible that I owned when I was 18. And I look at the notes that I wrote in the margins and I just laugh. Because I don't understand what they mean. But now when I approach the text, maybe through 46 years of insanity, I see different things. I think it's important that we understand that God can speak to us at different ways, at different times, at different ages, using the same text. Mm -hmm. And something that, when I was 18, didn't have a clue what it meant, I'm like, dummy? Don't you get it? Yes? I also believe that when we get to those tough scriptures, the worst thing that we can do is jump over them. When we get to those tough scriptures, it's then when, you're, when you've, you've done all the studying you can do, you need to pray. To pray that God reveals to you what's going on here. Why has, why has God given you a burden for this particular text at this particular time? And I guarantee you he'll tell you why. And finally, I think the last reason that we have those difficult texts in our lectionary and those difficult texts in scripture the answer is actually believe it or not in our prayer book in the collect at the very end of the Pentecost season we pray that God would enable us to read mark, learn and inwardly digest God's word isn't that really what all of us are supposed to do? When we come to 
the easy parts of Scripture as well as the hard parts of Scripture. And there are some parts of Scripture that are just difficult to digest. Maybe in time. Maybe in age. Maybe in wisdom. Maybe in experience. God will show you what he really means. I'll give you a very brief example. My daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, September, uh, excuse me, November 21st of 2023. Uh, it was devastating um, for our whole family. I'm very thankful to say that she is cancer free as of July 5th, so God is good all the time, uh, absolutely. Um, but you know, as a priest, I thought it was a pretty good prayer. And I thought I prayed pretty regularly after my daughter got cancer. I learned I was a puny prayer. And I didn't spend the hours that I've spent since then and what I've come to call soaking prayer. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I was connecting. But you have an experience like that, hopefully not as traumatic as ours. But God shows you new things in new ways that you never would have learned any other way. So don't run from the tough scriptures. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Seventy times seven. Don't cut your right arm off yet. But dwell with those tough scriptures and see what God has for you, what truth he has for you, because it's a tool that you will need later in your life.